Hi, I'm Stephen Hamm from Archery Supply. Today we're going to look at and review this Stotler recurve. Now, I have no idea about this bow. I've never seen one before. It's, it's just an unknown to me. And I kind of wonder, is this bow older than I am? Um, so, apparently the story of Stotler was he was a bow designer for Howard Hill long bows or bows. He went off and built his own company, and then as I understand it, um, he passed away. You may not, but this is what I understand. Um, and this bow, apparently these bows are still made by a couple of people um, who kind of love the bows. Apparently he was um, designer for Gordon Glass and helped design fiberglass for um, bows. So bit about this this is a takedown long this is a takedown recurve so you can see here it joins so there's a join here it's a very nice join and there's a join here down this here so you've got a leather grip here um, for the handle finish now the lamination this is the wood hit the lamination on the outside looks good um, the limb tips itself are chunky, so I expect a fair bit of vibration in here when you shoot it. Um, the bolts at the front, there. Um, look, the fiberglass looks good. It's got a couple of little scratches here, but overall it looks nice. Um, now, so a customer comes in the store and goes, well, how much will you give me for this bow? Now, I have no idea how much this bow is worth, and it's old, so is there a collector's value to this bow or not? Is there people who are going to say, this is an amazing bow, I really want this to add to my collection. I know nothing about collector's bows. Um, so, for me, I kind of look at this and go, it's an old bow, like, who really cares? But apparently these things have some value. So... We looked up in America to see what these bows sell for. Now, apparently they sell secondhand for about 450 US dollars, which equates to about 600 Australian dollars. So we're going to give this a shot and see what it shoots like. So the first thing I'm going to say is when you buy a secondhand bow, you run the risk of everything going wrong. You can't go back to the guy you brought it from and say, guess what, it's got a twisted limb or this bow broke just as I shot it or... You can't do that. So you run the risk. So it's a big, big risk buying an old bow or even a second hand bow. Like in the past, one of the bows I brought as a kid, it broke within a week of me buying it. Um, the limb just cracked and I was like, I was out of archery. Because um, I couldn't afford to buy another bow. Now, given that, when you're buying a bow like this, let's say it is worth five or six hundred dollars I don't know what it's worth um, we obviously brought it um, we purchased it today um, you're taking a risk because it's not like buying a bow that's on the back here as a shop you're buying a bow not everyone is going to be interested in this particular bow but it's it will have some sort of appeal to some people who want something unique I have never seen one of these bows, and I've been in archery for 40 years. This is the first one I've ever seen. So to me, it's a very rare bow. I don't know if it's highly sought after or what. So, But what I have seen is the arrows he brought with this bow, which is kind of interesting. So these are a gold tip arrow. So back in the day, I figured these were brought off my dad back in the 1980s. And it has the bare razor heads, which was what everyone shot for hunting. So this was the way hunting used to look back in the 1980s. Now these arrows, these are interesting. So feathers, you can see the feathers are falling apart. I think these arrows... I think these arrows are a reject. So I'm pretty sure from memory, I'm pretty sure these arrows were 1987, 87 they came out. And I'm pretty sure that e these are an Eastern arrow. And I'm pretty sure they're like a game getter, but they had a reject B 
batch where the anodizing wasn't correct, so they sold them off cheap. Now, back in the day, I'm getting the numbers wrong. Back in the day, I think the arrows cost us two dollars a shaft. Um, so they they worked out really affordable arrows, and I think they worked out the same price as Eagle Greens, which were really really soft aluminium arrows. So these sold really well for us because they're an XX75 grade, which was a, a stronger alloy, but at the price of an Eagle Green, which was a really soft alloy. And it was kind of camo, so it was kind of cool. So these sold really, really well. Price the year on these, like I said, about 1987. These here are autumn orange arrows. You can see the quality of the veins. Um, now, Autumn Orange, I think, went out of production in around 1987, 1986. So it kind of gives me a age feel for this bow. Um, you can see these are obviously his honey heads with a whole bunch of bears on the end. Um, and all um, camo. So these are kind of still in production now. But I'm guessing from the age, they're all around the 1980s. Okay, so the person who owned this bow says this bow is the smoothest drawing bow you've ever drawn. It's silky smooth and like this is the bee's knees. Oh, like he clearly did not buy this bow from my dad. So um, I imagine he would have purchased it in America and then shipped it into Australia himself. I imagine that um, because I don't think this would be a off the shelf bow. Um, we're going to shoot a carbon arrow through it and sort of see how it draws. Now this is a 60 pound bow at 64 inches long. Um, so that's written on the side just here. I assume that's the name of the person who built the bow just there. Alright, so... Let's have a shot, see what this is like. I'm probably going to draw it back about halfway. So right up to here, it's pretty smooth. Um, but then I'm getting to the end, um, it's starting to get pretty heavy because it is 60 pounds. And I'm not going to push it because I've got competition tomorrow. Now these limb tips I am think is going to create a fair bit of vibration at the end because they're quite, they're quite chunky, um, as you can kind of see the limb tip. But it's it's a pretty novel bow, and chances are you you're probably not going to see one of these, or you probably haven't seen one because I've never seen one. Quiet, very quiet. Well, I'm going to shoot one with veins because I'm like that was very. Actually, the vibration wasn't bad at the end. It was. Yeah, I think it's coming out pretty slow. So I'm going to say that to start off with. It's definitely not like a crisp... Like you can see the thickness of these limbs, they're quite thick. Um, so it's not like shooting a modern recurve bow today, which is quite quick and it's, it snaps on you. You know, like you get that, cr that crack. You're, you shoot it, it's like crack. It's not like that. This is There's no silences on this string. It's um, uh, mm, very quiet. Actually, the vibration's not bad. There's a little bit of vibration in the end, but the string's pretty stable. It um, it's not a bad bow. Back when I was young, I used to have a Damon Howard Hunter. When I was 98, 97, um, very much in that kind of feel of the bow and the shape of the limbs. So that's the, I'm going to say Strother, um, Stotler, Stotler recurve. Um, looks nice. I don't know what your views are on these sort of old classical bows. Um, it's very rare. So anyway, you can drop us the thing what you think it's worth because we're going to obviously put it up for sale I kind of think should I put it on the wall but then I think it's an expensive bit of artwork so I feel like I should resell it um, I'm Stephen Ham from Archery Supplies thanks for watching